this is Hannah Brooks and welcome to this week's Shop the Strip Mystery Shop Report. This week I've gone with a really well-known brand, Tiffany & Co, and I visited their Martin Place store. But the issue I wanted to examine was how well they had incorporated the app, the Tiffany & Co um, app that they had developed into the in-store experience and how successful they were at that. Obviously, um, like every time we go through this, there I'll give you three key takeaways from my particular experience which you can apply whether you're in the jewelry category or regardless of the size of your retail business. So it was a really interesting experiment and I hope you learned something from my experience. Before we get into the nitty gritty of the app itself, I really wanted to be conscious of what I believe Tiffany are actually selling. And I think if you look at this screenshot from their website, it becomes clear that they're not selling me an engagement ring, they're not even selling me a diamond. What Tiffany are trying to do through this app is sell me the nation of romance and I'm curious to know how effectively an app can be used to sell uh, romance. So is this app a, a successful tool in so far as educating me as a consumer? Is this app an effective funnel for getting more consumers into the store? Is this an app that helps me more easily navigate the purchasing, the path to purchase? Um, and in the first part of this particular video, we'll look at the app itself and its functionality. In the second part, I will then examine and speak of my actual in-store experience and speak to how effective I thought they were um, as tools to encourage me to become a Tiffany client. Let's start at the very beginning. If you were to download the app onto your phone, this gives you an indication of what the main menu looks like. This is probably a good time to let you know that I've previously worked for a luxury jewellery brand, but obviously in my commentary I'm trying to get into the mindset of a consumer who possibly doesn't know much about diamonds. And there was a significant amount of video content and I thought it was highly effective, um, very educational, great in um, allowing consumers to go behind the scenes and really get an understanding of the expertise that is required to produce fine jewellery. Um, I think a customer would come to their diamond consultation with a much higher degree of knowledge. I think they would be more confident in directing the sales staff if they'd used the app. And on a cynical perspective, from Tiffany's point of view, if people had um, already viewed this content, it would mean that they could reduce the time of the average diamond consultation. So therefore there could be more diamond consultations per consultant per day. But on, on the whole, you know, very effective educational tool. I've put this particular shot in the presentation quite early because I thought it was really significant. Right off the bat, Tiffany are trying to differentiate themselves through this app uh, from the competitors by adding or introducing this idea of presence. In the marketplace, diamonds are traditionally sold from what's called the four C's, which if you haven't bought diamonds before, is cut, colour, clarity and carat weight. And by introducing this notion of presence, Tiffany is saying, effectively, you cannot measure the beauty and the brilliance of our diamonds by the four C's alone. Our diamonds are special, our selection process is unique, and you will not find the caliber of diamonds that you'll find in a Tiffany store elsewhere. So it's really important that they have used this particular app to distinguish themselves from their competitors and to really clearly communicate their unique selling point and also that they've used it as, as a tool to further develop their notion of heritage and the heritage of their brand. So the app itself has some great features. You can actually browse the current Tiffany collection. Um, it's adaptable in so far as you can adjust the carat weight of the particular design you're after to give you an indication of what the price of that, would, that particular design would be, uh, which you know is great. A lot of luxury brands often avoid displaying prices and I think in this respect um, it's fantastic because it gives couples a realistic expectation of budget if that's a particular design that they're after. You can save your choices, uh, you can also in a particularly fantastic feature take a photo of your hand and see what a particular design would look like on your hand itself. I think all in all it gets you excited about booking an appointment with a TV consultant and you go to that consultation prepared um, with particular expectations of what that experience should be like. Okay, so you're done playing and it's time to start shopping. The actual, the app itself allows you to book an appointment directly. Um, so that's what I did. Uh, the email response from the consultant, Kyle, was very prompt, very professional, and I was very much looking forward 
to um, meeting with my consultant. But on face value, the link between the technology and the actual bricks and mortar store seem to be very efficient. But it's safe to say that my romance with the Tiffany app ended there. So why did the Tiffany in-store experience at their Castle Ray Street store in Martin Place fail to romance me? I suppose, you know, I had very high expectations. Tiffany was one of the first luxury brands to really get a stronghold in the Australian marketplace. They've been here since 1994. They would certainly be benefiting from the current influx of uh, Chinese tourists, well heeled Chinese tourists. And both the brand's reputation and the app itself gave me a certain expectation of service. And as this screenshot from their website would suggest, I meant to be meeting with a diamond expert. And I really didn't feel that was the case. I thought the experience was very generic. It was the McDonald's of diamonds consultations. I almost expected to be asked if I want fries with that. First and foremost, I think that the sales staff made me feel like they were rolling out a generic sales script, that there was no attempt to adapt the sales ceremony to reflect my diamond knowledge, my interest in design, my personal style, or my age. I just felt it was a generic sales script that was being rolled out and we're going to pull out the classic six claw solitaire in about a carrot because chances are that's what you're going to be after. So that would be my first observation. Secondly, I felt they really failed to communicate the romance of a company like Tiffany. It was taken for granted because I was there that I understood it. There was no effort to build on what I had learned from the company from the app itself. And I found that very disappointing. Uh, thirdly, I think it, it felt very much like a commodity. Like uh, when I started to, to express interest in larger diamonds, rather than saying I would really like to take you into a private room, it was... Basically, the indication was because you're going to spend this much, potentially we'll take you into a private room, which really took away from the romance of the tra potential transaction. And I was very much surprised because elegant services is what you go to a luxury brand for. It. And I was very much surprised that in, in this particular interaction, the sales staff lacked the talent and the sales skills in which to develop, deliver that kind of service. What I thought was really fascinating was that there was absolutely no mention of me using the app whatsoever by the sales consultant. The only reason I had made the consultation appointment with him was that I was you know, effectively funneled into the store by the app itself. Um, so no mention of that, no attempt to clarify what I had learned, um, what, where I was leaning towards in terms of design or diamond shape, just no mention of whatsoever. And when later at the end of the consultation, when I asked to be emailed some particular details, um, rather than say, do you have your phone with you? How about I show you how to use the app? You can save that particular one. This is how you can share it with your fiance. I mean, we're in a private room now. We wouldn't be, have been standing at the counter. Um, there was no mention of it. And I had expected with a retailer of this, caliber that the whole experience would have been much more seamless. The power of a marketing tool like this and the power of social media itself is the power of the share and the sales consultant was not trained in being able to maximize the power of my interaction by encouraging me to share it with either my friends, my followers or my partner and therefore I think it was a massive missed opportunity. Have a good hard look at these figures and I would encourage you to share them with your staff. 48% of sales staff never follow up with a prospect. That's astounding. Um, and I have to say that was the case uh, with my experience at Tiffany at their Castle Ray Street store in Sydney. Uh, I did not receive a follow up phone call. I did not receive a follow up email as per requested. And given that the dollar value of the diamond that I was interested in was a $58,000 engagement ring, if you add uh, an eternity band to that and a wedding band for my partner and a potential upsell when you got in contact with my partner, you might have said, I would have liked to buy a larger diamond. Um, that's quite a considerable sale and I'm very surprised to see that a company, even a company of Tiffany's size could walk away from a, a sale of that dollar value in this day and age. 
If you've ever attended a Shop the Strip seminar, you would know that we frequently use luxury brands as our case studies. We think whatever retail category you're in, there's a lot to learn from the marketing techniques of luxury brands. But from this particular mystery shop experience, I suppose the number one reason I felt that I did not connect with the Tiffany romance or the Tiffany's idea of romance was the expectation that they had built up in the app did not match the in-store experience. So the first point, make sure your marketing tools are consistent with your in-store experiences. Consumers these days are very quick to reject brands that appear inconsistent because if you're appearing consistent, you on some level appear insincere. The second point, know your unique selling point of your business. Um, one of the things I thought Tiffany did do successful in this app is they really captured the brand's heritage um, and were able to clearly demonstrate and to communicate what was special about a Tiffany diamond um, and how that differed from their direct competitors. So you should know what's special about your brand and it should permeate absolutely everything you do from your sales ceremony, from the tone of your emails, from your social media posts, to your packaging, to the brands you select. Uh, absolutely everything in your organization should reflect your unique selling point. It should permeate everything that you do. And the biggie from this experience, the big takeaway, is to ensure that you always follow up. Really do a proper audit of your um, organization and see what systems you have in place to ensure that cold leads, warm leads, and red hot leads are being followed up appropriately so money is not walking out your door. Thanks for your time once again. It was an interesting one this week. My expectation going into the project would have been that the app would have negatively impacted on my perception of the Tiffany brand, but the reality was it was the in-store experience, the service that they're renowned for, that actually had um, the negative impact. So it was a very interesting outcome. And it just goes to show you that even global luxury brands like Tiffany can get it wrong on occasion. So. You'll just learn from it and apply it in your own business. I will be doing a lengthy blog post on this particular issue on my blog to opinionated.com or feel free to contact me on the details in the closing credits of this video. Thanks.